Good evening and welcome on tonight's live Magpie Circle podcast. It's Solihull away, as we've said a few times. A battle that will inevitably draw comparisons between Ian Birchinall and Neil Ardley. Where do you think we are right now? Better equipped to seal the National League promotion deal or not? Frustration after a late draw with Yeovil. On the road five times in our next seven National League fixtures. Solihull, Stockport, Dagenham, Southend and Torquay. Can we sort out our travel sickness? And quickly. Eli Sam is named the National League Player of the Month. And Kel Roberts and Richard Brindley are both named in the England C team to face Wales at the end of the month. Your thoughts, please, on Yeovil. And how do you think we're going to get on at Solihull tomorrow? Uh, the latest uh, on Mike Cloonan, transfer speculation being linked with the Kings Lynn captain. And we'll be announcing the winner of the chance to watch Notts County First team train um, available to all those of you who donated to my lad Harry's 28 mile charity walk to Chesterfield. With me this evening to discuss all of this and much, much more, club record goal scorer Les Brad and Cuckoo Clock and Chloe Page. Evening to you both. Hi, boy. All right. Evening, Chloe. Yeah, well, at least, at least we've got a smile. I don't think there were too many smiles Saturday. Um, uh, you, you, you have been mentioned in dispatches, uh, Leslie, uh, by um, the sponsor, the match sponsor, who had the pretty thankless task of having to, na <laughs> to name Notts County's man of the match on Saturday. Uh, I think it was John Chambers um, was down there and had uh, someone from their group saying that you did a marvellous job uh, looking after them, taking them on the tour, uh, keeping them entertained. So uh, heartfelt thanks from our club sponsors to you for Saturday. Yeah, it's um, the first match oh, in a long time, probably over two years since um, we've been able to to go back to, to some sort of normality. So I was able to show the, the mascots behind the scenes and the match sponsors in the home team dressing room and down on the pitch side and... Um, it felt a little bit like uh, normal again, Paul, shall we say? Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> normal would probably not be an adjective we would use to describe the 90 minutes or 95, or was it 100 minutes, uh, on Saturday afternoon, unfortunately, though, Les. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, 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 it baffles me and I've tried to, to work out why um, virtually... All the games that I watch and, and over recent weeks, I'm talking Grimsby, I'm talking Halifax, I'm talking Saturday. The the game and the chances that we've had has been there to be wrapped up at half time. And I've actually seen um, on, on social media today, I don't know whether it was um, Facebook or Twitter, um, you know, Coleman at Accrington. He kept his players in for two hours after the game against Portsmouth. They lost 4-0 or 4-1 or whatever it was. And he got the stats with him. And Accrington had had 22 shots at goal. Um, 11, I think, was it 11? On, I, I can't remember. But um, Portsmouth had 11 shots. Four on target, scored four. And, and they were debating why... The opportunities, opportunities that they had to to put the ball on target, and and it didn't, and, and and time after time, and I'm not talking about a specific player, I'm talking about possibly all the players with the chances. We we are not testing the goalkeeper. We're we're, we're not hitting the target, and I, I can't put a reason to it. Hmm. Chloe, what was your thoughts on Saturday? just frustrating again I think the only thing kind of keeping us in them playoffs at the minute was our home form and the last few weeks that's kind of dropped off and dropped off um we got a point out of it which isn't good enough to be completely frank and I agree with Les that the game should have been done at half time I think we were probably poorer in the second half than what we were in the first but again, we still created chances in the second half that at least should have been on target, if not in the back of the net. So it's a difficult one. And I know we had this discussion a couple of weeks ago, whereas which is our problem? Is it 
it conceding or is it scoring? And my personal view was conceding because we were actually scoring every game because we went for a, a spell of matches where we were going behind most games, especially at home, and then going on to win the game. So scoring actually wasn't the problem for quite a while for me personally. I agree that we weren't putting all of our chances away, but you're never going to do that. Um, but as we've kind of come on from that a few weeks later, don't conceding still a problem because if you don't concede, you don't lose. And we are con- conceding still at the minute um scrappy goals sometimes um but our now problem is we're not we're not scoring enough we can't now outscore our opponents and but the problem isn't creating chances because even if we are playing I don't know not not as well as we usually do don't have as much as the ball like at Chesterfield that we're, we're still creating chances that we should be getting at least on target like Les says or putting in the back of the net and I've seen them do it uh, earlier on in the season and I, I, like I says, I can't put my finger on what the problem is. I don't think it's like one specific player. I don't know whether it's the formation. I, I don't know what it is. But like you say, it needs sorting quickly. We've now got a run of games all away, which our away form tells you that's not our strong point. But that can all be, always be changed very quickly. Um, I believe that we can always go on a run because we've done it before. We can do it again. It's just we need to be doing that now. We can't really waste a lot more time. It's getting kind of to the end of the season and the points are getting really tight, especially at the bottom end of the playoffs. So it's going to be a scrap for them last few playoff places, I think. OK, um, some thoughts coming in from uh, Flock. Harvey Huff says, one of the worst performances of the season against Yeovil. Cameron injured for a few weeks. Uh, can't see us getting more than three points this month. Dear me. Uh, we are going to struggle to stay in the playoffs. Chris Gosling, we need possibly 28 points from the last 42 available. And that might only get sixth or seventh. There's not much margin for error in there now. RM says top teams win when they are not playing well. We had enough chances to win, even though we didn't play well. We are just not clinical enough. Chris Gosling, again, we need a natural goal scorer. Jürgen Halligan, we have the worst defence in the top nine. Um, Duncan Comrie, evening on, I think we need a a minimum of 10 from these next seven games. Um, Les, I think it's fair to say... um, uh, Quite a few of the fan base were pretty disenchanted with um, Saturday. But Boot being on the other foot, um, you look at the playoff picture and while many would say top spot is beyond us now, when I've taken a look at it, you know, two two games in hand on Chesterfield, got to play them. Um, clearly, Boreham would have got quite a few games. But for me, third is far from out of the equation. Um But it does require us um, to go on a decent run of form. Um, I think it's fair to say we've probably gone off the boil a little bit in the last few weeks. Um, I think our current form over the last five games is either worst or second worst of the top eight or nine. Um, Look. I'm sure even the record club goal scorer had a few stinkers for knots. Um, how much how much emphasis do you put on Saturday or can it be dismissed as a bad day at the office? No, I don't think it's Saturday. I think it's it goes beyond that. There, there, there's a say that the last three or four home games that we could have put them to bed by, by half time. And I, I still don't think that the, the, the league is over. Um, go back, how many how many games have we got to play? We've got over a dozen matches still to go. If you go back a dozen matches, Stockport will be low us. They're now clear up at the top. So it just shows what can happen. Um, and, and, and I'm sure it, 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 somewhere along the line, Players have to take responsibility. The manager can only do so much. They can work on the training ground um, week after week. They can work on on, on different um, moves to, to open up defences. But somebody has to take the initiative. Somebody has to be responsible and say, I'm going to win this game. And, and if we can do that, if we can get players that, that, that are going to show that, that, that mentality... Like, I only need to go back to um, 
the Barnet game. You know, we, we've gone and won that game 6-1. Do you think that that game we, we produced any 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 better chances than, than than what we've done over recent matches? I don't think so. I looked at Elisha Sam and he never stopped running that first half. He, he was on fire. He closed people down. He got goals where we want to scub goals before. And and, and that's that's the the mentality that each player's got to have in there. They, they've they got to go out that way. And, and um, I don't think we'll be far away if we can produce that. Chloe, how concerned in recent results are you? I'm getting concerned. Um, I completely agree that we can go on a run um, and that we tend to play better against the better sides. Obviously, I didn't quite go to play at Chesterfield. And looking at the run of games that we've got coming up, Yeovil at home for me was kind of a banker, if you want to call it that. Didn't end up that way. Um, and I just think at the minute, the last five or so games, we're making life really difficult for ourselves. It's really easy for us, especially because we're on the podcast and we put our predictions in before the game that we say, oh, we take four points out of the next two. And then we either if we draw the first one, it's kind of like we're putting so much pressure on that next one because we, we're so desperate for a win. We go and lose at Chesterfield and we're like, we can kind of afford to lose at Chesterfield at the minute if we then go and win against Yeovil, which then we didn't do. So if we've got, like you say, a dozen games just over to really go and prove what they've got. All of these players should be fighting for a promotion, fighting for a contract next either season, whether that's with us or whether that's with someone else. Um, this is the time of the season where everything needs to be put into these games. We've got tough games coming up, but who's, who's to say that we can't go on a run? Um, I think the longer this run goes on that we're on at the minute, the more concerned I'm going to be. It's just frustrating at the minute because even if we're having kind of a bit of a bad performance, you still feel like we could have won the game. We're creating enough chances. Like um, on Saturday, I I personally thought it was kind of one of our worst um, recent performances. Yeah, we could have still won that game, like Leicester's in the first half if we wanted to. Um, so it's it's just getting frustrating at the minute. Um, Tuesday night, tomorrow night's a, a massive game. We all know that. And so is every other game this season, especially for the teams in and around us. Because if we can gain points on the teams in and around us, that's going to project us further than it is beating the teams that are below us at the minute. And that's just how it's going to go. So we spoke about before the next run of games that we've got coming up is kind of a lot of them are away from home. A lot of them uh, teams that we're kind of fighting for promotion with. And then our last eight games are the opposite. I don't think we've barely got any teams that are kind of in the top half, really. So if you come out of these next set of games that um, are playoff teams and you come out well and you come out kind of firmly in the playoffs, then I, I can't see us kind of dropping from there. But it's, it's going to be really important to see how we do perform and what kind of results we can grind out. I think even if we are playing poorly, we've got to kind of find a way to win. Um, we've seen Chesterfield do it. We've seen Stockport do it and loads of teams around us. And the, these teams are grinding out points and that, that's what we're falling behind on in a minute, at the minute. So it's not so much the poor performances because we can still go and win them games. So let's see what happens in the next few weeks. And then I'm sure I'll be getting either more or less concerned as we go on. Uh, Julie Henshaw says, Yeovil always been a bit of a bogey team for us and our Trent side neighbours too. <laughs> Wonder what she's referring to. How times change from when Yeovil are playing Forest over two legs for a place was it in the Championship. Um, Martin Hearson, great for Eli to win uh, Player of the Month. Well deserved. Just hope he can keep it up and others refine their mojo to match his performances. Kelvin Hallam, evening all. Had a lovely meal in the hospitality on Saturday. Shame about the three points but glad we rescued a point uh gary wardle we have lived on ifs buts and maybes all season now the reality is kicking in jürgen halligan chance to make some ground back if we win tomorrow wrexham play boreham wood nigel cameron we're trying to play Premier League football in the National League, and I'm not convinced it will bring us success. Um, it's been an age-old debate uh, for this season, Les. Um, you know, quality of performance, um, 
chances created versus, if you like, game management, ruthlessness, efficiency. Um, I, I was watching a bit of the Forest game on Friday night. 91st minute, whatever it is, uh, Forrest get a set piece uh, and uh, Ryan Yates heads it in, one all. And there's a graphic shows up on Sky that Forrest have scored more goals um, in uh, injury time uh, than any other team in the championship. Um, are we almost too purist in our approach? Or do we need to add those? And of course, we got a we got a we got a late goal uh, to scrape a point. As someone mentioned to me on Facebook, we'd rather be a late winner than a, than a late equaliser. But are, are we almost too purist in what we do? do? Do you think we need to have a bit more of a roughy scruffy mentality, or is it a case of we've got what we've got and we'll stick with this approach? Well. <laughs> It's, it's a difficult one. When you look back over the matches, and I think people that watch most games, home and away, will say that virtually every game, um, not to county, deserved to win. They have created chances. They probably missed chances. And the opposition have scored goals, poor goals. Saturday was a giveaway goal. So if we don't give that away, we've got another two points there. Halifax. Another giveaway goal, another draw, two points gone there. Grimsby, that game could have been sold, finished at half time. We lost that one, three points gone there. And and very quickly, you 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 you, you could be up near the top. So the, the manager works with the players on the training ground. They work on creating chances and, and they do that with abundance. What we watch on on, on match days. It's exciting to watch. They create chances. If if I'm being critical, I would say that sometimes I think maybe they overdo it. Maybe they take one pass too many and then they could shoot a little bit earlier. But I'm not going to be critical of that. I've enjoyed watching what I'm trying to get. And I can't find is why really easy chances, shall we say, are not going on target for the goalkeeper you know, are we trying to be too clever? Are we trying to stick them in corners instead of just hitting the target? I don't know, but it is very, very frustrating because, you know, all the games I've watched, and I didn't go to Chesterfield, Notts County have been the better team and, and should have won the game. But we're not ruthless enough to put the ball in the net. And that, for me, is is, is the major thing that we're missing, the ruthlessness the mentality from players to say, I'm going to win this game for us. I'm going to put that ball in the net. Um, and we need to find that. We need to find that with the run until the end of the season. We've got four big matches coming up now, aren't we? We, we start with Solihull tomorrow, then we've got Wrexham, then we've got Stockport, then we've got Dagenham. Um, it's a great opportunity for the, for the players now to, to move on and, and, and establish themselves. That's what you want. If you want to be successful, they're, they're the matches that you want to be playing. I think the stat is the most number of games we've won in um, succession is four um, in, in, in terms of league. Um, we have debated for a long time now dominance of possession, proliferation of chances, Chloe. Um, I'm not sure we're, ever, we're actually any closer to solving that conundrum, which then kind of ties back into your point, and I'm sure many, many people make this point. If you, if you don't keep a clean sheet, you've always got to score two to win. Yeah, and um, I completely agree with that. I mean, we can all talk about scoring goals that, don't get me wrong, we have got goal scorers and we are creating the chances. I don't know what the issue is. I don't know why these players can't put the ball in the back of the net at the minute. I mean, take, take for instance, the Rodriguez one at the weekend. I mean, he had a couple, but he was, what, six yards out of Mr. Header? Basically, no goalkeeper to beat. And why? That's that's just that's just one example. I could, I'm not picking out one player, I'm not just picking out one chance, but as an example, why are they now not going in where five, six games ago, they, they were the ones that were going in. 
I don't know. I don't know what we're missing. I personally think we're missing kind of a Michael Doyle, a Michael O'Connor, an Alan Smith, somebody to really get the game by the scruff of the neck. It, even if they come on just for 20 minutes in the second half, just for the last 20 minutes to get, literally take the game by the scruff of its neck, push everybody up. Because I think when when we're getting later on into the game, there's there's no urgency and we're kind of playing, like Les says, one too many passes, but getting up the pitch very slowly. Whereas I think the, these players would, would get the ball in midfield and they'd go forward and just create a chance kind of out of nothing and come on and win a tackle. Or if we are winning um, and it's the last 10, 15 minutes of the game, go and go and win as a foul, go, go and put a tackle in, take a yellow card if needs be. And I just, I think we're lacking that at the minute. And we're just kind of, Nothing seems to progress throughout the game. Whereas I think in the first half of the season, we really looked like being a second half team and we all laughed about it. And we go one nil down in the first half and maybe equalise just before half time. Then we go on and win it. Um, and it's now like, I don't, I'm not really seeing much change throughout the game. Um, even if we are making substitutions, um, they tended to be like for like. I know we've had a lot of injuries and you, Nobody can help that. I mean, we talk about bringing on kind of Cairo Mitchell, but that's kind of been when Eli's been injured. So it's kind of, it's a like for like sub, but you've kind of got to do it if somebody's injured. Um, there's not too much changing around you can do with injuries. But I just think on other occasions where we're not changing it like we were in the first half of the season and bringing something different to the game, it just tends to be like, I just see it as, we're getting to the point where if if we're winning and then concede, we don't look like scoring again. And I, I don't know what that issue is, but I, hopefully, look, we've done it earlier on in the season and I know we can get back to that. I just, I don't know whether they just all need a bit of confidence. We, we could do with another Barnet game, to be honest, or even the Wrexham game I see as the perfect kind of opportunity to go and win that. It, I mean, it doesn't matter in terms of the league. Um, and I know we talk about injuries. We've got a lot of them in it. Um, actually, they're starting to pile up um, when we don't need them to. Um, but I just see that as that game as an opportunity. Go and win that. Go and get some confidence back and then see what can happen. Because as soon as these players are full of confidence, you'll see another game like the Barnet game. I think we are lacking real confidence at the minute. Uh, Nigel Cameron, until we stop conceding and start keeping clean sheets on a regular basis, then all the huff and the puff will be in vain. Chris Gosling, from a psychological point of view, and he's echoing your point there, Chloe, uh, we uh, we need to come beat one of the competition in their own backyard. Um, do, do, do. Kelvin Hallam, I think, dare I say it, we are too pretty to watch on the eye and everyone knows how to play against us now. Uh, Gary Ward will recreate most of the chances, dominate possession, but make too many errors. All of those on a consistent basis, um, just not good enough to make the best of our attributes. Chris Gosling, if we had a natural striker finishing the pretty moves off, we'd all be lauding it. Excuse me. How many six-yard headers does Ruben want to miss? Pythagoras. Too many self-inflicted goals conceded. Need Warnock's risk-averse defensive philosophy. Um, five away games in seven, Les. Um, all tough. Solihull, Stockport, Dagenham, Southend, Torquay. They're sandwiched around home games against Boreham Wood and Chesterfield. Um what do you think needs to happen, trying to be a, a, from a constructive and a positive viewpoint? Our away form hasn't been great this season. It has, to an extent, been our Achilles heel. Um, do you think you carry on playing in the same vein? Or would you think, well, we'll maybe try and shut up shop a little bit and nick something? Or do you think he well, would have to compromise said, his philosophy? Yeah, as I said early on, most of the games that I see, you see more than me. Um, we generally create more chances, more better chances. We don't concede many chances, but we give away silly goals. Um, for me, when that is happening... It's the case that maybe there is a voice missing. And I think we certainly miss Jim O'Brien. 
um, when he starts the matches or he comes on and you watch him uh, and he sees he sees things when they're right and he sees them when they're wrong and he gets on to people when they're wrong and he, he kicks them up the backside to make it right. And I think we, we, we surely missed him. Um, so it's difficult to say, do you change things? When we're creating chances, they're there to win the game. And I don't see many teams passing through us, creating chances. There are usually mistakes that we we concede goals. So <laughs> what do you do about that? You know, I, I, I'm not privy to working on the training ground, but um, certainly, you know, the goal that we gave away on Saturday, the goal we gave, gave away against Halifax, they, they can't, they're not acceptable, are they? That, they, they shouldn't happen. Um, and, and the opportunities that we have to score, we've got to hit the target. I can accept the goalkeeper saving it. I can't missing the target for five or six yards out. So why that is happening, if we can find the, the answer. But I don't want them to change. I love the way that they play. And sometimes it loses a bit of pace. It needs to be picked up. That's, that's what captains do. Captains drive that on. We missed Kyle, didn't we? Cameron, when he, when he went off on, on, on Saturday, he's a key player. Um, so, yeah, let, let's just hope that tomorrow night we can we can get it going again. And we've got a big game on, on Friday night and then Tuesday night. Like, like you say, some really big games coming. And, you know, if I'm part of that squad, I can't wait to, to play. That, that's how I would be feeling. And I'm sure all the lads will feel that way. I think some of the fans' frustration, Les, is though, we know there are plenty of chances created every game. We know there will be a dominance of possession. Um, but that's happened quite a few games for quite a few months. And, that, and the conversion rate to points isn't where I think we would all want it to be. You know, let's be realistic. For the last two months... We've been kind of sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. You know, we've not been first, second or third four or five months. And I guess some supporters will say, well, do we not need to compromise something? It's all very well dominating possession. It's all very well having load of chances and say, well, if, you know, if we score, then we, we're 3-0 up at half time. The reality has been... We've not been. So kind of at what point do you contemplate a change or, you know, to use a time-worn phrase, do you carry on trusting the process? Well, we changed on Saturday, four minutes into injury time. Long free kick, header into the net. No football being played there. Good answer. Yeah, no, no, I'm not... I, 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 look, that's good, aren't they? I, I, you know what? I like last-minute goals. You know, and well, it justifies the means, don't it? It you just know? goes to show that um, sometimes that's all it needs to score a goal. The right ball delivered, the right player going attacking it, and it's, it's in the back of the net. Um, so you don't need to over-elaborate. But we also are seeing plenty of chances being created with that style of football. Chances that we sh should be seeing hitting the target, you know, making the goalkeeper save it. Um, and as I said, John Coleman at Accrington, he got the same problem. He could not work out from the analysis that they had how they'd lost 4-0. But um, And they spent two hours locked in the dressing room after the game trying to sort it. I'm going to be interested to watch their next result to see what, what happens from that, whether they found a solution to the problem. But I think, to be fair to John Coleman, he's taken Accrington from Uni Bond League, up about four promotions into National League, uh, in, into EFL 1, as it's now called, the third tier of English football. I think, you know, to drum up bang before, Chloe, the reality of the situation at Knotts, and you perhaps clearly, because you're a heck of a lot younger than me and Les, you, you haven't seen Knotts County's glory days. By and large, you have seen dross for 15 or 20 years, I'm afraid. But even so, even so, 
there is a weight of expectation on Notts getting a return to the Football League. And this, I think, stems with a very high bar being set. I mean, look, you're a young fan. How big a deal is it for you to get back into the Football League or, you know, we win more games than we lose in the National League and it's not such a big deal for you? No, it's it's getting more and more important every season. I think... I think we all kind of in the back of our heads knew that it wasn't going to go perfectly and we weren't going to go straight back up. Um, And I think we were kind of our vision was maybe a bit blurred that first season. We kind of came down and it was a bit of a culture shock. And we kind of had this presence of we're not County, we'll go straight back up. And we got playoffs, but it didn't work out. The next season, we did it again. It didn't work out. We're now on to our third season probably get playoffs it's a lottery it's not quite a lottery but they're difficult playoffs um and they're not going to get easier um and then i just think if we were in this for another season how much how many more times are we going round and round in this cycle i know a lot of teams have been through it and it's so difficult to get out of this league but it's just becoming more and more important every season because we're now labelled as a National League club and we need, we're we so desperate to get back in that Football League, fill the stadium out a little bit more. I can't fault the Knotts fans for turning up every week. We're still getting like six, 7,000 week in, week out. It's incredible for the National League. And we need to get repaid, I think, so, sooner rather than later um, because a lot of money is being spent by fans and we're just seeing kind of the same result every season. Um whether that's under an oddly type of football or whether that's under a Birchnell type of football. At the minute, I can't say what's going to happen under Birchnell because he had, this is his first full season and we haven't got to the end of the season yet. We could still get promoted. But it's a kind of case of, are we going to get the same result again? Um, and I don't know what will happen if we're still in this league next year. I don't know what the owners have planned. It, it's it's a difficult one, but yeah, I, I want to go up more than anything scrap the scrap the trophy at this point but I, I I don't get me wrong I love the trophy it's a great opportunity to go to Wembley and I think we should still put the effort in now we're getting so close again we've got to the semi-finals twice but if it was as easy as saying oh well do you want to win the FA trophy or go up I'd absolutely snap your hand off to go up but it's not that it's not that easy and you can't just make that decision because if you throw away, we've spoken about this before, if you just throw away with the FA Trophy, don't try, uh, let Wrexham come here and just absolutely destroy us. First of all, that doesn't help confidence in the league. And second of all, doesn't then mean you're going to go and win the playoffs. So, unfortunately, it don't work like that. But, yeah, it, it's becoming more important every season. But we'll see how we go. We've not, we've not got to the end of the season yet, so we can't talk about next season until we know where we'll be. Um. We've talked a lot about formations changing at the back, Les. Um, I think virtually 99% of the time, Kyle plays the lone striker. 4 2 3 one, three, five, one, one whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, Kyle has kind of been our main goal threat ever since we dropped into the National League. Um as the club's record scorer, um, where, where, where do you think Kyle is right now? Well, that's a difficult one. I mean, um, you're referring to the, the time that I played and um, the goals that are scored. Um, that was all around um, a formation of 4-2. Four, four I always played up front with um, another striker, Tony Haitley, Richie Barker. Um, Mick Vinter, and we had relationships in terms of dropping off, getting in the back, um, and Jimmy Cyril insisted that there was no passing the ball at the back. He came forward. Um, so, um, in terms of Carl Wooten, you know, when you watch um, a 90 minutes, he doesn't see too much... Uh, of the ball when it's played forward long, um, which might be one, well, I'm sure it is one of his strengths. And um, I personally feel that that we could utilise that a bit more 
hitting the long ball up to to Kyle. But um, uh, and 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 if you're not playing with another striker who who when the ball is is kicked high and you look like you're going to go and win it and the other striker's running in at the back of you, you're not really causing the the central defend, defenders uh, a lot of things to think about. So um, it gets a bit stagnant. But um, Kyle always gives his lot. I'll never fault him for for his effort. He, you know he's. He, he, he's had a um, few chances gone missing uh, of late, but um, yeah, you go through spells like that. It'll it'll come good again for him certainly. Um, I don't have an issue with him at all, but I would like to see him playing with another a striker up front. Um, I'm not sure it takes us very far, but I know lots of you out there are itching to have the debate and chuck your two pen a thing. Um, so the other way, inevitably. Uh, we, we, we we talk about Neil Ardley and the job he's been doing at Solihull, having been at Knott's. Compare and contrast with Ian Birchinall. So uh, I'll let you all whack your messages in now, and I'm sure plenty will come in. Um, what, what, what's your take on it all, Chloe? Look, clearly the king is dead, long live the king, OK? <laughs> um, what's your take in terms of where we are now? compared to where we were, let us say, a few games before Neil was relieved of his duties last season at a not dissimilar stage? So I saw a stat on Twitter a couple of games ago. I can't remember whether it was... It was definitely before the Oval game. I can't remember whether it was before the Woking game or not. That at the same point of the season, we played the same games. We were on the same points. We had the same amount of wins, losses and draws. But this season, we'd scored four more um, than under Ardley. Um, obviously, now we've had a couple of games pass. And I imagine it's still very similar. I think that maybe last season was possibly a little bit of an easier season. I obviously don't know what the run of games was like last year compared to this year. Um, I can't remember that far back and, and what order the games came. Um, it's it's such a difficult contrast to make because on statistically they're they're virtually the same, and I think we had a better league position last year again because I I personally think that last season was the best chance of getting promoted since we've been down here. We, we all know how difficult it is every year, but specifically this year with the amount of money that's been spent, the teams that have come down the managers and the players that have come into this league have just made it so difficult. Um, I think that I've preferred the type of football we've played this season, whether it's been more effective or not, that comes into question. Um, it's always nice to watch attractive football. And I just, I call it bombs off seats moments. We've had a lot more of them this season, in my opinion, than last. Um, we played in a specific way last season, just as we do this season. Obviously they're completely different. Um, I like Les says, I prefer to watch the football we've played this season. Um, but again, the effective of it, the effectiveness of it is in question. It, when it works, it really works. And we look like personally, I think we'd be a great League One, League Two side with the players that we've got, the chances we create, the style of football we play. Um, in this league, it doesn't tend to work as often just with the kind of conditions of the pitch. Uh, we talk about a lot. Um, our opposition, the way they like to play. It, it's difficult. Um, but looking at the stats, we're no better off and we're no worse off at this moment in time. Uh, Chris Gosling, at the minute, neither Ardley or Birchnold have got us promoted. That's the only similarity between the two. Kelvin Haddam, there's no comparison at all. Ardley has done a brilliant job and did so here and got unfairly dismissed. Brackets in my eyes anyway. Uh, NCFC Pi says, infuriates me reading some of these comments sometimes. You've got to be absurd to think that the owners don't want promotion. Uh, Calvin Hannum, again, I'm of the younger generation, but I love the get, uh, to get the ball forward tactic. Feel for Kyle. Um, nothing to do with, at the moment, they are doing long balls that hardly hated. Uh, he's not a natural target man. Uh, plenty more coming in. Um, Les, I'm not going to say whether we're better now or not, because it's unfair given you have a role within the club. You clearly knew both Neil um, 
and 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 no ear um better than 99.9 percent .9 of everybody in our magpie circle flock how would how would you compare their methods their approach man management working with players what what what, what would you say i think um pretty similar um both of them like to play football both of them like to use the pitch like to get the ball wide get like to get the ball in um it, it, you know when things go right the manager is always the bee's knees when things go wrong it's never the players is it it's always the manager so yeah it, it's a tough job that they have um i'm not sure how neil left um the club just over a year ago now, isn't it? Um, he wrote a beautiful letter to the League Managers Association um, singing the praises of the Notts County owners and everything else. He, he was down at the Barnet game, sitting in the director's box. He was mixing with the people behind the scenes. Um, he's welcome at Notts County anytime. There's no animosity. So um, I, I, I think his contract was coming to a an end that season and um, maybe um, the owner's style moving forward didn't sort of meet on, on both sides um, and so they thought it was a good time to leave and maybe Ian come in and, and give him a chance to start putting his ideas in place before the end of the season so very, very similar guys, both very positive, both want to win matches both want to play the right way that um that, that's how i see the pair of them um evolution as opposed to revolution les so clearly the owners have a philosophy and a blueprint for how they seek to develop the club and they seem to be certainly by football standards very patient people and Ian was given a, a long-term contract in football terms of four years. Um, there's been no immediate pressing of buttons. We have to get up, etc. this year or whatever. Um, but then you look at, let, let's just say, if you, if you look at um, Dave Challoner, went to Hartlepool, changed things very quickly, got Hartlepool promoted very quickly. Stockport spent an awful lot of cash uh uh had a younger academy style manager simon rusk in charge uh wasn't working even though they'd spent a lot of money came here and we battered them and they were a poor team uh, changed manager fairly soon um and kind of gone in and made a, an immediate impact you possibly say that when he was there james Rowe at chesterfield where They'd been floating around bottom six, bottom seven, bottom eight. And then things changed very, very quickly. Um, what about that whole sort of kind of impactful manager that makes an instant impression as opposed to going for kind of a longer term burn and development of a philosophy? Yeah, well, he seemed to come in and revert to the way that um, he had Hartlepool set up. He got rid of his playmaker, Rooney, because uh, there was a lot of football being played by Stockport in those days. Um, he got quickly up front, he got some big lads up front and they went direct and um, results have come from that. Um, philosophy being maybe at this level, if you plant the ball into the box often enough, you'll get a few chances. Um Woking did it against us at home, didn't they? They, they? The last 20 minutes, all they did was just pump high balls into the box. They scored four goals. Um, so that may be a philosophy on, on, on how you, you need to be successful getting out of this league, Boreham Wood. We saw them last week at Everton. You know, I, you were at Boreham Wood, I was at Boreham Wood. They play players back in numbers and 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 the counter attack they get less than a thousand home gates people watch it people won't watch it it's um that that's how it is and and 
managers have different ideas clubs have different ideas on on what they can do with the size of the club and how they can take it forward um the owners at Notts county want want a proud football team they want to play football they want to do it the right way um and i enjoy watching the football i just i don't think there's a lot wrong other than hitting that target a bit more often and, and eliminating these silly, silly mistakes that are going on. Chloe, um, we're all off to, uh, we're off to Solihull tomorrow. Um, uh, in many respects, everyone's very down, aren't they, after Saturday? You know, and that's reflected in our comments uh, section tonight. Um, the reality of the situation is you put in a great performance, you get three points at Solihull, and 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 off we go again. Um, the flip side to that is if you don't get a good result tomorrow, you miss a game next, at the weekend because it's Wrexham. You then go away to Stockport on Tuesday, and I think then you go to Dagenham away on on Sat uh, on the following Saturday. Um, we really don't want to be playing any more catch up or on the edge of the playoffs. The, the, than we currently are because what you're then going to get is a bit of a pressure cooker and things are going to be mounting and there's going to be steam coming out of people's ears and pressure can do a lot of things to a lot of people definitely um like you say you talk about am i getting nervous yet i think there's too many games to go to kind of be like oh we're not going to get playoffs or we definitely are um but like you say they they're coming thick and fast and against teams that we really can't afford to drop many points against. I think the next two games, league games, that is excluding Wrexham, are massive, um, as, as they all are. But you lose tomorrow, you lose against Wrexham. Like you say, you're going into that, that Stockport game without a win since Woking. And we're all looking, they're all probably looking at each other. Confidence is rock bottom. You know what confidence can do to players like Cal, um, Ruben, uh, Wotton, players like that. But yeah, if like you say, you do it the flip way and you go and get a result tomorrow, whether that's a scrappy 1-0 win, 90th minute, or whether that's a 4-0 win, comfortable win. Um, a win's a win and that's what the confidence is, that's, that's going to get us back up there. Um, and then let's get on a run. Uh, I can't say anything until these next couple of games have passed, um, but then the pressure's really on. Um, but even if we do go and win them games, that doesn't mean we can then deserve, um, we can then go and lose a couple. It doesn't really work like that. We've now got to go on a run. Uh, we, I know we're not going to win every game until the end of the season, but we really can't afford to lose any more um, and turn some of them draws into wins, definitely. And we could be on our way. Um, but yeah, the pressure is going to absolutely mound if we start dropping points in the next few weeks because it's then going to get to a point where we can't lose any more, or we, we've got to kind of going to get to the point where we've got to win every game, and that's just not going to happen. So, th as long as we can keep that pressure off as long as possible, um, but it, it could go the other way, and pressure could do good things to us. But I just think as if we keep that pressure off as as much as we can by winning games and drawing our away games at least. I think, bearing in mind saying that, I think we need to win tomorrow. But if you kind of win your home games, draw your way to the end of the season, converting maybe some of them draws into wins, we can absolutely go on a great run and, and kind of secure um, a top playoff place, which is what we need. Um, if not, the, these teams that are not far behind us at all, Grimsby, I think, are a point behind, same games played, and everybody's going to be fighting for it now. So, it's going to be a real tough competition to see who can put the form in at the right time. Um, Leslie, um, what's what's your take um, on where we? What's your gut telling you with where we are now and where you think we're go, we're, we're going to finish? Yeah, I think you said earlier for you, you wouldn't still write off the title. Um, what do you think is realistically achievable for Knotts between now and the end of the season? Are, 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 are you still looking for a third play, something like that? Would you take playoffs right now? What, what, what's your take? 
It's all in the players' hands. Um, you know, uh, if I'm a player in that squad, I'm I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. I'm looking forward to next Tuesday. I'm looking forward to the week on Saturday because they're the big games. That they're, they're, they're the ones you want to go and play. They're the one you want to go and go and win. And what you mustn't forget is the pressures on the other teams as well. That they're not um, just going to go out there just to cruise through it. There's a pressure on them. Um, and this is this tells you whether the players have got the right mentality when you come into these games. Um, that they've got to rise above everything, and they they, they went up to Grimsby and won, didn't they? Mm. Um, and and they played Stockport and they, they've beaten Stockport at home, so they've got that, and and that needs to come out. And and I just think maybe. Along the way, there's a voice missing or two inside of that 11 players on the pitch that gets everybody on the toes. Sometimes I think we may get a little bit soft and pass it around a little bit easy. And it needs somebody to to be on there with a voice and um, getting them on the right track. Um, one positive, one positive, Chloe, amidst all of the, the last 72 hours. Eli Sam is the Vanarama National League player of the month um i think it's fair to say that a couple of months ago he was a fairly downbeat figure you know he was at best on the periphery uh, he's worked hard he's got uh, a place in the starting lineup on merit and he's scoring goals and it was interesting watching the interview that the club have put out today to see a very big smile on his face again yeah, and like you say, it's absolutely well-deserved. Um, I really kind of dread to think where we might be without him since since the role of the new year. Um, he's been absolutely vital. And when players have dropped off, he's kind of been the hope. And he's been the one that's converting these chances. And he's, he's scored kind of most games at the minute. He's on fire. Um, but it's not just the goals. Um, it's what he kind of brings to the side as well brings everyone into it, creating chances where out of nothing sometimes. Um, and it, it's great because without him, like I say, I don't I don't know where we'd be. Um, I just hope that he can keep it up um, and get the confidence of everyone else up as well, bring some more plays into it. Hopefully link up with Wotton a little bit more would be kind of perfect at the minute. It's what we need. We just need him to keep top form and everyone else to catch up with him at the minute. Um, he's shown a fair bit of character, hasn't he, Les? Because... I think it's fair to say he he slipped a long way down, didn't he? You know, he slipped a long way down the pecking order. Well, um, as you're aware, Ian Birchnell um, comes into the hospitality lounges at home matches an hour before kickoff and uh, announces the team. And before the Barnet game, um, um, he, he announced that... Um, Eli was was going to be playing. He said he's been working so hard in training that he thought he deserved a chance. And that night he was just incredible. And let, not talking about skill here. I know he's got a lot of skill, but his enthusiasm to chase everything down was something I don't think I've seen, um, you know, this season from... In, in abundance as it was from him that night. And he was an absolute um, credit to, to not only to himself, to the team as well. And that's why we scored all those goals. And, and I just hope that he can tingle that emotion in one or two other players and we can see something similar. Um, because if we get that, there ain't any doubt at all that we will finish up in that top three. Um, but we need a bit of a spark from somewhere at times. Um, England's C team named today, Chloe. Uh, Kel Roberts and Richard Brindley uh, are in it to face Wales at the end of the month. Uh, March the 30th, I think it is. The cynic in me says there will be quite a lot of withdrawals for that squad um, from various clubs. We shall wait uh, and see. Um, but nevertheless, recognition uh, for both of those. Yeah, absolutely. And it's great to see. Um, and I'm sure they're, they're best pleased about it as well and probably deserves. I think I was having a look at the team and I thought, quite fancy that team, actually. They're pulling kind of the best from everywhere. So 
no, it, it's great to see that we've got two players on there. It's not, it's not just one of them. Um, and it's good recognition for Brindley because I think um, he goes under the radar a little bit and people just kind of over, overlook him maybe. Um, obviously, they, they draw up on him when he can see it, but when he has a good game, he's kind of not really a name that's mentioned much, um, a kind of player that does his job and does it well very often. So it's nice to see that he's getting that recognition. And this could also help improve um, confidence, especially for Cal, um, that he's being recognised, even if he's um, kind of out um, out of form a little bit, that he, he's still getting the recognition that he deserves and that this is another good chance for him to show everybody what he can do because we we all know what he's got, but it's a, it's a time to show him what, um, to show everyone else what he can do. But I'm sure a lot of eyes will be on them both now. They've been drawn up for that. So we'll see what happens next season and whether we've still got them both. Yeah, it, it, I was interested to see that no Boreham Wood players in it. I don't know whether it's because of their FA Cup and extra games, but yeah, no, 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 no Boreham Wood. And from what I can see, they've kind of capped it, I think, at most from three players from any one club. Um, although I, I I am a little bit sceptical as to whether there will be some withdrawal from some managers uh, not wanting their players playing another game in what clearly is going to be a very cluttered and a very important end um, to the season. Um there's been a bit of transfer speculation today. Uh, I have absolutely no idea whether there's any truth in it or not. Uh, Mike Chewan from um, Captain of King's Linnet. He's made nearly 300 appearances uh, for the Linnets. So he's clearly used to getting a promotion or two on his CV because King's Linnet have come up um, the ranks a bit. Uh, he got the free kick against us, Laz, in, the, in when, when the game was finally played, when he, he rattled it in from about 25 yards. Um, you've not seen any mystery faces wandering around the club today, have you? Or were you too busy on the golf course? I was um, busy on the golf course trying to recruit teams for the Lifeline Golf Day. But I was hoping you would pick up. I was going to ask you if you didn't bring that up, then yes, go on. <laughs> um, so no, I, I've not. Um, I only go down on a, on on a Thursday, and I shall be down tomorrow. Um, obviously, uh, I'm travelling with um, one of the directors to the match, but um, um, I've not seen any. Any uh, faces down there? So um, yeah, it's it's new to me. Um, yeah. Look, everyone loves transfer speculation. I, as I say, I have no idea whether there's anything in it. Of course, the National League doesn't have a transfer window open and shut per se. So Knotts clearly can be in a position um, to strengthen their squad. Um, we shall have to wait and see. One or two injuries from the press conference this afternoon. I think, as we feared. Um, Carl Cameron is going to be out for um, a few weeks. Um, doesn't look good, uh, but I'm sure um, the medical staff will be working on to get him as quickly as possible. No Richard Brindley either, certainly tomorrow. Um, we'll see whether Jaden Richardson makes it. Um, I guess you're looking at a central defensive access, Chloe, of um, recently recalled Connell Rawlinson and uh, 91st minute goal scorer Alex Lacey tomorrow. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm expecting, to be honest. Um, maybe a Kelly Evans in that side, depending on how Richardson's doing. Um, these players have played before together before. Uh, not not so much recently, but they, they've definitely played together before. And I think we, we need to have a squad at this point that we can rely on them all. Um, it's good that we've kind of got some height back. Um, we've still got some height in defence because... We do see t um, seem to concede a lot of set pieces. So the more height we can get in there, the better. Obviously, we'd be losing a bit if it was Kelly Evans, but the man can jump and we all know he can win a header and he let, gets a little bit feisty. But I think that's what we need at the minute. Obviously, I don't want anybody to get sent off and we actually have gone this far in the season without having anyone sent off. Um, but he, he bring, brings a little bit of feistiness to the game and or try and win you a tackle. So even if he even if he starts, um, I wouldn't be too disheartened. Obviously, it means that Jaden's probably um, a week or two away, which isn't ideal. We could do with um, everybody fit, um, but this isn't going to stop us being able to win the game. I don't think. Um, I think maybe if we'd got I don't know 
chicks in and maybe one of the defenders um, as a central pairing who maybe hadn't played together for a long time, I'd be more concerned. Um, but no, we've got two central defenders um, that are playing in their positions, that know how to play the game. Chicks are doing well at left back. Um, I'm not sure about um, Joel and where Joel Taylor's at. I haven't heard um, whether he's injured or what what's going off there. But we, we've got enough to cover um, the back four. Um, or the back five, whichever whichever way he plays it. Um, so I'm not overly concerned. Obviously, uh, it'd be great to have Cameron back, but we, I think we've got enough in defence and we'll see if they can keep a clean sheet because it'd make a change at the minute. Um, what about the loss of Kyle, club captain, Les? Um, statistically, I think when he's not played, we've not always done so well. Um, is he a big loss, do you think? Massive loss. Um, captain involved in everything uh, that, that, that's going on with a goalkeeper taking the ball off the goalkeeper, breaking through the uh, the lines, corners for us. He's up there challenging. Yeah, he's he, he, he's going to be a massive lo loss. But lads are coming in, and it's up to them to show that they're well capable and um, put on a great show. Yeah, and and I think as we said before, look. Clearly, there is going to be added spice to the occasion with a former Knox manager being in charge. Um, and I think football such, we it, we always go too high and too low, don't we, Les? You know, um, it would be really good tomorrow, a win tomorrow, Yeovil almost, almost gets forgotten about. Yeah, I... Ian's always saying that after each game, you've got to look at the next game, not the end of the season. It's the next game that counts. And tomorrow night is the next game. And he'll be going out there, setting his stall out to get three points. Um, and that's what we've got to hope. Everything clicks into play and, um, and we come away with those. We might be happy with the point at the end of it. We just don't know. But um, they'll certainly be going out there to do the best and, and, and bring three points home. Well, let, let's hope we do. Um, you'll be off there, Chloe, won't you? Are you going tomorrow, Les, or not tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I shall be there. Yeah. Uh, 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 have, you, <coughs> have you booked up the courage for another Atco's bus special, or are you taking it easy in the car? I'm taking no, it we're um, we're in the car, so we're get well. We're getting the train down. <laughs> um, well, I'm getting the train down personally. What, from uh, Manchester. Gonna, yeah, so I'm in Manchester at the minute. Getting the train down in the afternoon, and we'll. Have a steady drive over, so yeah. Very good. And and, and Les, are you carring it rather than bus? I'm in the car uh, tomorrow night, um, next Tuesday night, and the following Saturday. <laughs> uh, Not on yeah. bus. Because Stockport's one of your old clubs, isn't it? Of course. I mean, I presume they'll be rolling out the red carpet for you. I've not heard anything from them uh, as yet. But, um, they did tell me earlier in the season that would like me to be the special guest and... Um, which might be going down at half time to do a draw. So I'm not quite sure how I deal with all that. <laughs> uh, okay. And finally tonight, we said we'd do um, uh, announce the winner for all the various fans that donated to Harry's uh, sponsored walk to Chesterfield. Um, Harry's picked someone out earlier. Uh, the winner, and I'm sure they'll be listening, uh, is Stephen Silver. So if Stephen can just make contact via any of the social media channels to us on the Magpie Circle, we can give him the details um, to come along and watch a Knox County first team training session. Uh, uh, there's a date in March, or no, a date that uh, April, I think it is, uh, but we can go through all the details, so Stephen. So well done and thank you to everybody else um, for donating um, to Harry's walk. Uh, 800 pounds uh, goes to Lifeline Les to commemorate the memory of Colin Slater. Uh, and, and, and I know the club can't say too much at the minute, but I think it's fair to say that these funds, via the vehicle of Lifeline, will be going to support something to commemorate Colin at the ground in the future, if that makes sense, yeah? Yeah, that's 100% uh, um, the, 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 the case. Um, I was speaking with uh, Jason Turner um, 
last week and there's a, um, quite a big project going on and the funds that um, Ari has, uh, has raised and he's done a fantastic job, by the way, walking over to Chesterfield. Congratulations to him. They will be going to, uh, to something that I think the Notts County supporters and all of the city will be very, very proud to see. Excellent. Well, we will let the club make that announcement when they're ready to make that. Um, Ari's done his bit and you've all done your bit to support him so thank you very much indeed uh, he won't be walking to Solihull it's a bit far I think they've had to already uh, set off um, give yourselves plenty of time we've got a battle round uh, NEC and airport tomorrow for those of you going by car haven't we so um, uh, I think there are still tickets available as well so if you've not got your ticket uh, yet you need to get it in advance, but you can do it online or get it from um, the ticket office tomorrow. I think there's a cut-off point sometime mid-afternoon tomorrow. So if you're planning to go, make sure you get your ticket in advance. Um, that about wraps it up tonight. We will be back on Wednesday when uh, Lee Curtis uh, will be joining us from the Nottingham Post uh, to review what we hope will be three points from Solihull on Tuesday evening and look ahead to the FA Trophy. That game, remember, is Friday night, not Saturday, Friday night. All that remains for me is to thank you all for your participation, questions, thoughts and views. And a big thank you to Les and to Chloe for joining us this evening. Thank you ever so much, uh, Les and Chloe. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks, Paul. That, thank you, Les. Thank you, Chloe. That concludes it for tonight. Look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. Take care for now. Bye-bye.